of the ordinary. You know, our lives are pretty ordinary. For most of us, things may be comfortable with some times of difficulty, but really pretty normal in relation to others. But occasionally we hear or we see or perhaps even experience something incredible, even miraculous. Like the story Thomas Froze related in one of his newspaper columns. Seven-year-old Moses Kalulu was kidnapped from his home, probably intended for a ritual sacrifice by a witch doctor, an illegal but all too common practice in Uganda. Prayers for the boy were being lifted to God around the world. Then a border guard notices something wrong. There's a Ugandan boy that is crying wildly on the back of a motorcycle taxi, but the driver is Kenyan. The driver gets scared, releases the boy, and takes off into the night. Moses is rescued. Incredible. Well, over 2,000 years ago, some shepherds were dozing in the fields outside Bethlehem, caring for their sheep, when they had the most incredible experience. An angel appeared to them, informing them of the Messiah's birth. The long-awaited Savior had come, and they were recipients of this amazing news. How would they respond? Would they believe the news? Or did they simply think that Jedediah had put something strange in the stew that night? Well, let us reflect on what the account tells us. First of all, seeking. After the shepherd's encounter with the angels and hearing about the birth of the Savior, they went to seek for, search for the child. We can hear the excitement and eagerness in their voices when they talk among themselves. Let us go and see, they said. It reminds me of the eagerness with which people rush to an event they hear is happening, or if it becomes known that a celebrity is in the area, suddenly there's a host of people looking for him or her. We read, so they hurried off. The shepherds didn't take a great deal of time debating this. The news was so unusual, so stupendous, that there was this quick rush of chatter, a quick agreement, and a speedy departure. I can imagine they kind of forgot all about the sheep for a while. And why not? The long-awaited Messiah, the Christ, God's anointed Savior, had been born. Now, they didn't seem put off that they would find him in a stable. In fact, perhaps it made them more comfortable. I mean, who would be comfortable approaching a palace? The awe-inspiring Herodian fortress and palace built by Herod the Great was only a few kilometers away from Bethlehem. None of them would be brave enough to go to such a place as that. But a stable? <laughs> they felt right at home there. So they went in search for this Savior, this one who had come to humble people such as them. I picture them running through the streets of Bethlehem like children on a Christmas morning who are, you know, trying to be quiet, but in their excitement of looking for, through their stockings or making enough noise to wake the neighborhood. So we have been given a message of good news. The Christ, the Savior of the world, is here, and we will find him if we earnestly seek him. Scripture says, you will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart. So let us seek the Christ. Second thing we notice in, in the story is worshiping. Now Luke doesn't say much about their encounter with Christ, simply that they found him and saw him. But there's no doubt they worshiped him. And that was certainly true in the case of the Magi who came much later, up to a couple years later. Matthew tells us they bowed down and worshiped him. And why would they worship him? 
Well, he was God's anointed. He is identified as their savior. He brings an excitement and a hope to their lives. The shepherds had lived under the harsh rule of the Romans. Their longing for deliverance from their cruelty and the onerous taxes was, was great. They looked forward to freedom. But God had also promised them freedom from sin. He had promised to create a new heart within them, a heart to love and follow God. That is deserving of worship. When we understand the purpose of Christ's coming, our proper response is also one of worship. As we bow before him in stillness and humility, we glimpse God's holiness and beauty. We learn the truth of our need and of God's love. True worship, as Archbishop William Temple stated, is to quicken the conscience with the holiness of God, feed the mind with the truth of God, purge the imagination by the beauty of God, open the heart to the love of God, and devote the will to the purpose of God. Oh, let us worship the Christ. And finally, we see them sharing. Yes, after seeking and finding and worshiping the baby Jesus, the shepherds returned to their flocks. But they didn't return directly or quietly. They didn't keep the news to themselves. We read, when they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. Clearly, the shepherds couldn't keep it to themselves. They were so amazed and filled with joy, they had to tell everyone they could. We can relate to that, I think. Those of us who are parents and grandparents eagerly tell our friends and family, even total strangers, the joyful news of a child's birth. When Jasper, our first grandson, was born on July 6, 2011, I was at Maple Grove Family Camp. I found out not long before the evening service about his birth. And I passed the news to a number of people right away, including the camp director. And during that service that evening, he invited me up and gave me opportunity to share the news with the people gathered there. Now, he didn't have to plead with me to share. He didn't offer bribes. I was eager to tell anyone who would listen. Well, likewise, the shepherds couldn't keep the news to themselves of this Messiah's birth. They spread it around to family, to friends, to strangers. People were amazed at their story. Many were probably doubtful, but that didn't stop the shepherds. They just shared the good news. And we too should share this incredible news, particularly in a society that has largely forgotten the true story of Christ. Yes, Christ's birth was nothing short of miraculous. I'm certain the people around Mary and Joseph found their story beyond belief. But for the shepherds, and later the Magi, this was the birth of the Messiah, Emmanuel, God with us. And after finding him and worshiping him, they were eager to share this terrific news with everyone. Many today will not believe the miraculous birth of Jesus, but we should still share the good news. Oh, we don't need to argue or debate. Just share. Share from our hearts. And then live our lives in faith and obedience to Christ. When others see that our worship and our faith leads us to live as Christ would have us live, then they may be convinced of the truth. The Savior has come. He is Christ the Lord. Hallelujah.